Welcome to the next video from workshop three for the M plus workshops. This is Janice Cookin. We're going to start with demo 10, which uses the same NELS file, uh, data file. And then we're going to also talk about some models on a different file, which is, uh, will be demos 11 and 12. <clears throat> So in this video, we are starting with a model very similar to the one that we discussed at the end of the last video, and that was um, a logistic regression regressing graduation on ZSES and sex and achievement. And this time, we're going to add another variable, and it's uh, achievement squared. And so in order to do that, we have to change this in three different places. We have to define that variable, and I know it kind of looks weird because I'm starting here at the bottom, but we need to define the variable in the defined statement. We need to include that variable. Again, we need to include it at the end of the use variable statement, and then we need to put it into our model statement somewhere. So I've included it here. So I have graduation on ZSES, sex, ZACH, and ZACH squared. So I'm going to run this model and take a look at it. And we see that um, that is ZACH squared is, in fact, uh, a significant predictor because the two-tailed p-value is less than 0.05. So there are all the coefficients, and the negative of the threshold is the intercept. I'm going to take a moment and look at the FIT statistics. Now, this drops slightly from 8070 to 8068, but I want to look at the uh, log likelihood and the deviance and actually look at the, um, the deviance difference and do a calculation of a chi-square difference test of model fit. I'm going to show that to you. That's in the notes. So I'm going to bring that up now. All right, here we go. Okay, so the deviance is negative two times the log likelihood. So in this table, I have a calculation of that compares the demo eight, nine, and ten models in terms of model fit. In order to do that, I, I collect the log likelihood, I calculate the deviance. I put down the number of parameters that are estimated, the deviance differences, so that's the difference between the current model and the prior model. And since I don't have a prior model to demo eight, so I don't have a difference there. So the first calculation I do will compare demo nine and demo eight. I have one parameter difference, so I'm estimating four here and three here. And then I calculate a P value for this chi-square with uh, chi-square equal to 677 and one degree of freedom. So in this case, uh, there's the two models are not significantly different. So in that case, uh, I prefer the more uh, the, the demo 9 over demo 8. And when I start to compare demo 9 then to demo 10, I do the same calculation. This time, they are not significantly different. So in that case, I would prefer the model that is simpler, that's more parsimonious, that has fewer parameters. So overall, demo 9 is the best model for this particular set of data predicting graduation. And uh, just... This is a calculation that you'll see for non-parametric models a lot where you use a chi-square difference test. You might have seen it previously looking at different confirmatory factor analysis examples. Um, all right, so now we're going to move on to demo 11 and 12. So in 11 and 12, we have a different data file. It's called the mjmplus.csv file. And I in this, um, I have variables for marijuana use, and that's the number of occasions, and achievement score, SES, sex, uh, and then achievement in SES. These are the Z scores, and these are the uh, original scores. We also have graduation, dropout, and this post-secondary education plan. So 
All of these variables are included in here to be, help us to run different models um, and to ask different questions. And then you can use this file to run additional models if you want. So for our first demo, we're going to run um, a multinomial regression. So we want to predict the odds ratio of each category of MJ from sex. So in this case of multinomial regression, the last category is always the reference category. Here is um, our basic um, uh, calculation. We're taking the log of the probability that, for example, for MJ equals zero over the probability that MJ equals four. And so we'll look now at the INP file to see our result. Something that's different in the INP file is that we are, instead of saying categorical, I'm saying nominal. Now, in this case, the variable is considered a nominal variable. And um, although the MJ categories may actually be ordinal, um, I'm going to run it both ways so we can take a look at the difference in the results. So here, MJ on sex, and we'll go. All right, so now let's take a look at this. I'm not going to go in detail through the fit information. You can do that on your own. Um, but here we see uh, some coefficients and some intercepts for the, there are four levels of MJ. So we see these, when you say nominal, you're basically doing three different um, regressions and with three different intercepts and three different coefficients referring to the three different levels in comparison to the uh, last level. When I say last level, I mean the level, uh, last level as in MJ, it says MJ number three, but it's comparing it to when MJ equals category four. Um, let's take a look back here. Now, category four is actually not even identified. It's the fourth category. So it's a little tricky here. Category zero is one, and uh, category one is one to two occasions. Category two is three to nine occasions. Category three equals 20 plus occasions. When we look at um, a frequency distribution, we see that category, there's no category four or six. We only have categories zero, one, two, and three. So category three is that last quotes uh, condition. And so the regression always compares everything to that last condition. And when you're running a nominal <clears throat> regression, which is what this is, everything is compared uh, just one regression at a time to that last regression. Um, and interestingly enough, as we use sex as our independent variable, we also end up using uh, the last, con which is the highest uh, condition as the reference. And so when we look at the results here, these uh, are the results from SPSS, where um, the, the reference category is 20 plus occasions, but the reference category for sex is, is sex equals to one. All right, so now I wanna go through one more example. This is demo 12. Now I'm gonna do demo 12 two different ways. And here you see, I have the same title and data file, variable names. I'm gonna still call MJ nominal, still keeping my estimator as MOR, but this time, I'm using a model on two continuous variables rather than on a dichotomous variable. Choosing that, it may, that makes it very difficult to, to um, interpret the results. And if you're not, you know, if we don't spend a lot of time on it, it's a little tricky. So I, I hope that you will use demo 11 as a comparison if you ever need to run um, a um, a nominal model in and plus with a categorical or a uh, dichotomous variable as an independent variable. But here, this one should be a little bit easier. In this case, um, we again will see that we have three different 
regression results and three different intercepts for those three. And um, we can look and see uh, that most of them are not even, uh, they're not significant predictors. All right, but the results can be compared to the um, results from SPSS. Those examples are in the handout that I gave you. And so next I want to show you what will happen. And this is really uh, the correct way to do this is to, if we run this as a categorical option. So I am going to open up this W3 demo 12. Dot uh, underscore categorical CAT and in this case I'm going to be using categorical equals MJ. Now something that's you either have to make a note of it, memorize it or something but this is a little tricky and that is that um, nominal in M plus is equal to multinomial in SP, SPSS and categorical in M plus is equivalent to ordinal in SPSS. So I'm this time selecting categorical equals MJ. And so I'm running this to be similar to an ordinal regression in SPSS. And in this case, I can see my results are different. I have one regression equation with two uh, coefficients and three thresholds for the three different levels. And if we look back at our, um, the handout that I shared with you, um, in or we're using um, something called uh, ordinal regression in SPSS, we see that um, we want to predict the odds ratio of the category MJ from those two. And um, this is, these are the results using SPSS using a logit link from function. What I mentioned in class or when we were face to face is that the interpretation of multinomial and ordinal regression can be challenging. There's really two parts to it, actually maybe even three parts to it. One of them is to choose the which regression makes the most sense and then figure out how to run it in the software you're using and then how to interpret the results and using the link functions to come back and uh, identify what the coefficients mean. I would have to say multinomial and ordinal regression uh, are situations where M plus is not as user friendly. And I um, just would re recommend that whichever software you use, you, you learn your technique in that software. I hope I didn't confuse you by going back and forth. Um, but uh, my, my, like I said, my number one recommendation is just to identify uh, your model, figure out how to use it in the software, and then make sure you uh, take the time and get some resources to interpret the results. And the Jay Osborne website and the textbook is excellent for that purpose. Um, all right, that's it for workshop three. And workshop four uh, will cover PATH and SEM, and then we'll be moving on from there. Thanks so much.